Okay, we are back. Donovan Sadiq, Sean, Ford Time, Mr. Myrtle Valley, Daryl Terrell, and Mighty Max. And again, uh, Sean was leaving off, leaving us off with some facts and some numbers that you guys might want to listen to. So, Sean, go ahead and continue. Yeah, well, where was going to leave off now? Or uh, pick was uh, now to make matters worse, we have a city council that um, hasn't bothered to show up for the last two weeks. And. Um, Quite frankly, they're they running out of care. time. What? Yeah, they're running out of time, actually. Yeah, and uh, we and they want to. They don't care. They're trying to. The, Gutierrez is trying to uh, eliminate or as much as possible the time for public feedback, and these idiots are trying to uh, appoint someone that's going to be just like them and do more of the same and have more of that. Yeah, me too. Uh, attitude. To try and make a. Uh, uh, a strong voting block on the city council to do the same stupid stuff that they're already known for. Right. Did, did, did you hear the argument that Victoria Baca said that, well, you know, we got to keep the city moving forward. And if we wait on an election, then the seat will be vacant and we're at 2-2 and nothing will be getting done. Well, in this case, I'm not I'm not so disappointed that nothing's getting done with them. Right. What's the rush? Yeah. You know, Daryl, what's your uh, take well, on that? Well, that's the that's thing I, I talked about before. What, again... If you know two two, I mean the facts remain is you gotta learn how to get along. That mm-hmm. that's the number one thing. If you put your personal ambitions second and put the people first, you get much things done. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how I look at it. And uh, and you, election it, it it needs to happen. And I think as I told uh, Mayor Gutierrez, he should continue to represent that area that he did. He was when he was elected and he was appointed mayor, that he could do both. Right. I mean, I always go back to that because... Because he's technically still a council person. Well, well yeah, because he, he's not... He's part of the city council. Right. If you look at the... Well, he's still a council person. He's a council, he's a council person. person. So he could do the same job. He could, he could do what Until he the election. Or, until right. the election. And so to say that we need somebody, you, you know what's best. You should continue to do what you were doing. And... And you guys got to learn to get along and put the people first to so, uh, the, the interest. So, so your essay, you're saying that he could get two votes? Is that what you were saying? Oh, no. That, you know, that was interesting you said that because the late uh, Charles White, we had we used to talk about this. Councilman White, we, we had this thing about, well, we had elected mayor versus an appointed mayor. He said, mm-hmm. well, wait a minute. If you, his argument was if mm-hmm. you have an elected mayor, then he can belong to some part of the city. Right. And so that person's going to have two votes. And mm-hmm. I didn't look at it. I, I, I see what he was talking right. about. But the facts remain, if you put the people first, interest first, a lot of things will get done. That's the common, that's why I said the common purpose. Okay. But, you know, I don't want to cut you off, but we already know that they aren't, they aren't here for the common good. That, that ain't why they were elected. They were not here for the common good. So that's a dead issue already. Well, that's why, I, like I said, the city will never move forward into a new frontier because if people get it in their, in their skull mm-hmm. that the only way we're going to move forward is the fact to put the personal ambitions and put that, that like you're saying, that lady, again, with the hole in the roof first mm-hmm. and or that person that's on Sunday Boulevard pushing the car mm-hmm. first, we'll never move. We'll never move forward. Yeah, that's the thing is that in the process, process of doing um – whatever their personal personal agenda is. I mean, we've got um, a tiny, for, for the size of the city, we've got a tiny police force. Um, we have minimal, if any, uh, social services. Mm-hmm. Um, they completely dropped the ball on those lights. Um, the calculations I sure. came up with as much as uh, $40 million. Right, they, and, they, they, and, and then they, they never voted on that, did they? They no, never approved it. They so, never did anything with that. So, so it basically passed by and we missed that opportunity. Yes, Idiot. Yeah, so that could have, uh, depending on the technologies that developed, uh, we were looking at, uh, where is that paper? Um, we were looking at, um, up to, uh, um, Sean's got a bunch of notes here, you guys. This guy it might as well be a lawyer because he comes in here with a vat full of uh, facts and papers and stuff like that, which is how you should do to, to, to prove your argument. So. Yeah, we, we, uh, we could have. 
We were looking at as over the course of twenty years, we were looking at as much as twenty six million dollars of savings. Savings, minimum. savings minimum. But no, you know, we have so much money, we just waste it. So, well, that's the thing about again, if we put me this city with good health, it, it starts again infrastructure. What is our infrastructure deficit in this town? Mm. As in, no one has actually brought to figures how how many streets, sidewalks, infrastructure backlog. And another thing, like Sean was saying, public safety. Our first priority should be re put more police officers on the street, infrastructure improvement, like in your in your area where you live in Edmont, mm-hmm. and throughout the city and start building the city back with the foundation of the infrastructure the roads, the sidewalks, fill the potholes. Well, you know, you know, since we're speaking of infrastructure, isn't it funny how we did a four hundred million dollar bond supposedly for the schools? Yeah. Majority of that money went where? I'm guessing anywhere but the schools. It went well. Some of it went for the schools, but they took a lot of that money and put it into a stadium to build the stadium. It is that isn't what the people that ain't what they told us that the money was for. You know, my my property tax went up. Everybody's property taxes went up. This is supposed to to, uh, to renovate and get rid of those uh, temporary uh, things. I don't see that happening at, at Moreno Valley High School. There's still in a lot of the high schools. Yeah, it's buildings. Yeah, those little trailer buildings yeah. that they have. That was part of the the bond to get rid of that and make permanent structures. And I, as I drive through the city and I look at the schools, I don't see them removing them or anything of that nature. So you know, it, it's just it, it's madness. I'd be curious to know how much that money is getting diverted to other expenses that eventually end up in their pockets. Yeah, a lot of administration fees and things like that. Now, now, now Daryl, you, you're, you're really into the education thing. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that money being diverted for not what it's supposed to be? Well, for? see, the first, first of all, like you, I, I think we should get rid of all of those trailers, mm-hmm. get rid of all of them. That money should have been spent for permanent structures. Like and they, I, like they yeah. lied and told us it was going to well, be used. Cause I, I've never seen a school. I'm not used to seeing trailers at schools where I came from in Georgia we have permanent structures right, right and I come out here and I see these kids and these trailers and mm-hmm. stuff I mean they should have took all that and said you know we're gonna build a school like they're doing with um, Edgemont yeah from tear it down, tear it down and build it back right. up funny, every school like we're talking about those annex buildings that's mm-hmm. one of the things in that uh, LA Times article from 1985 mm-hmm. I was talking about so that's right. something that hasn't changed another well, thing that hasn't changed in the last 30 well, years well he- here's what's scary do you know I took my very first college course at one of those at Moreno Valley High School, right on the corner, right on the corner when you first move across. That's where I took my very first college course. And that was over 30 years that's ago. That's where I took mine at, too, over at Moreno Valley And it's High still school. there, 30 well, years later. Well, the I don't think those things were supposed to have a life expectancy that long. No, they, no, they weren't. And I remember when they put them up. I remember when they put them there. They said, oh, this is going to be temporary because we're going to be doing this, doing that. 30 years later, they're still there. Well, it's complacency for one thing because people are so used to seeing it. And it's like uh, it's like going to my job and you only see self checkout open. And, and, you, <laughs> right. and you see one you see one register open. And it's, oh, my God, I didn't know you had one open. But right. you're so used to it. Right. And see, that's the thing about it. We got to get out of this complacency. And say, look at the thing. These kids have these same, right? These portable Nothing's gonna classroom, right. and it's going to say that. And it, they should have ripped that. That bit should have been the first thing on the project right. list. Is to all, those of those, all of those, all of those down. Yeah. Norman, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, you have you're the one that gets all, all the feedback from the show. Yes. Um, have you ever heard anyone who criticize me for saying uh, we shouldn't bother talking to the city council about homelessness and mental health and substance abuse? Not at all. If anything, they uh, criticize you about your right wing a- activism and, uh, you know, your wild Western, uh, <laughs> you know, toting things. But no, no, nobody has ever criticized you for, for that. that will, uh, if anything, you, you got a lot of supporters in what you're saying. Well, I think that's a pretty sad state of affairs that I can say don't bother bringing up a major sub- important subject to the sure. city council and people agree with me. Right, right. Well, again, you got to look at Moreno Valley. And people don't like, like me to say this, but when you have a bunch of 99 cent stores and you have a poor population that is willing to accept warehouse working, and they, they want to work at a warehouse, but they want Microsoft wages. It, it it doesn't add up. It's just, it just it will never change until until you um as I always tell you until you have an educated skilled workforce until you have right. a higher um, education attainment level which means college or a two year degree mm-hmm. you're not going to have those kind of companies come here because they they will be wasting their time because of the fact they would spend more money trying to train 
or bring import people from other cities and take the jobs. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. Riverside is just of Moreno Valley. That's why they're doing the same thing over there and nobody's saying anything. My name is Evan Moron. <clears throat> and this has been my public service announcement. Uh, when I talk to people from Riverside, they they don't understand why we're doing the things we do. You know what? Everybody that I talk from Riverside says, jealous of Moreno Valley? Yeah. Are you kidding? This is a city that's over 100 years old. Yeah. Nobody, we're 30 years old. Nobody yeah, recently, cares about Moreno Valley. Right. I'm going to talk about something a little personal, but recently I was talking to my counselor about uh, just being frustrated with uh, some of the activists. Mm-hmm. And just same people, the same, same people fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... Uh, they said that um, because part of the thing that's hard is to not make it sound like I completely lost my mind like I'm, <laughs> like I'm schizophrenic or something. Um, but they, they said that yeah, that what's going on in Reno Valley almost sounds like the almost sounds like the plot of a bad TV show. Oh my god! I mean, you know, I I, I try to tell people, you know, like I said I love Moreno Valley, I predate Moreno Valley, but I honestly tell people when they ask me where you're from, I you know, I I. I I tell them Moreno Valley, it's next to Riverside, yeah. basically. So uh, well, that's the thing is that the, the developers are getting to do whatever they want, and we're not getting any services to uh, fix the problems. They're not even trying to keep up with the street lights. They're not doing anything right. about um, road improvements to uh, relieve traffic to where it's like you stop at every single stoplight. Yeah. Oh my God. There's too many stoplights. Unless you're, unless you're out in like the odd hours of night, like mm-hmm. unless you're like out, out after ten or eleven, then you're stopping at pretty much every stoplight. Um, I think uh, I'm running out of ways to uh, justify um, keeping the city together at all. I'm, right. I'm, I don't... I'm, you I'm, have better things to do in life. I mean, it's almost... You, you know, you want to quit, but at the same time, you're like, I, I gotta... Yeah, but also what I'm saying is I'm, I'm uh, th- at this rate, it might eventually be better to dissolve the city I, I've always said that. when we were When we were part of the county... When I first moved to this area, you didn't have these problems. I mean, yeah, we were unincorporated. We're out here, whatever the deal is. But we function so much better. Yeah. And the county, they have the law enforcement services and the, ho- right. the homeless service and the mental right. health services that. That we're lacking yeah, currently we're lacking. now. Currently now. So um, real quick, uh, if you guys are looking for kitchens, remodels, handyman services, there is a veteran out there. He has his own company. It's called Turner's Construction Service, 909-609-9395. And his name is Chris Turner. You can email him or go to his website, www.turnersconstructionservice.com. And uh, we're over here broadcasting. I recently finished my kitchen. It is finally finished. I put the file. so on, nice. I did it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it was a. It took me about two months uh, by myself. I still got to do some moldings and stuff like that. But knowing what I know now, maybe I should have got a handyman and just paid the money, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and have them do it that way. It wouldn't have taken me so long. But I'm telling you, it was a. Uh, I, I live in the Edgemont zone, and um, my cabinets were 36 years old because my house is 13 years old. I guess this year. And it was it was time to do it, and you know you know I don't want Max to come in and complain when she wants to go to the kitchen to get that breakfast or whatever. I want to be paying out that cash. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, brand new kitchen, I'm very happy with it, and I'm just moving on. And this is where I'm going to be. This is where I'm going to die. It'll be perfect for my selfies, though. So right there, you I go. like nice backdrops for myself. Right, right. I have so, a question for you. Sure. You remember you were uh, speaking once about the difference between you know you're talking about the roadway that was an mm-hmm. interesting discussion right. about the difference between the highway and the and the freeway right the state that, yeah it's state that. I mean, I, that was okay just, it, well the, the thing is if you go anywhere in the united states and where they have truck stops and stuff like that you're going to see most of the truck aren't interstates interstates was was made in the eisenhower administration for the military the way the interstate is constructed its ingredients and its materials that are used are a lot stronger to uh, support heavy type equipment. That's why when you go to an airport, LAX, or you go to Ontario, they don't cut up their their runway every year. The materials that are used is a a higher grade material to support so, so much weight. So when you know, if you go back east, a lot of people go back east, Georgia, Alabama. You know, I don't care if you go to up to uh, New Jersey, you don't see too many truck stops on state highways. Because state highways, you know, the tax, the tax base, it's the state people that pay for that. Whereas if you're on a federal system, everybody in the United States contributes to the federal system. So everybody's been on the 91. All that construction that's going on over there in the 91, a lot of that is state funds. 
to fix that little area and, you know, stuff like that. And they got some, you know, federal grants to do it, but it's mostly state funds that fund that. But any kind of uh, working, it's funny because I had a, a, a friend like Sean, you know, he's a right winger and he hated Obama. He hates Obama. But the guy worked uh, Caltrans. And if it wasn't for Obama signing that, that work type program, he would have been out of work for years. Right. You know, and it's funny how people don't know what they're, they're up against. It's like you're seeing a lot of the uh, Republicans that voted for Trump, and I'm not a Trump basher. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I want Trump, and now Trump wants to replace uh, the Affordable Care Act, and right. the guy didn't even realize he was he on did. Obamacare because they caught, you know, he got confused in how it was, and now I mean, it, it's just so. So it, many people need the Affordable Care Act, and <laughs> right, right, but you know, but 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 my point with the NBA, uh, and how that works is you, you can go anywhere in the United States and you do not put warehouses with all these diesel trucks and semi trucks on state highways because it's going to tear up the roads because let's face it, you know, I'm a councilman or I'm a, a assemblyman. I got my cousin Bo- uh, Pookie over there who wants to open a uh, whatever, you know, company and I give the contract to him. And that's why when you go on the 91 and the 60 and you see how, how, how they patch it, yeah. they put tar in there. And there you go. Yeah. 91. It's like you drive down, down there. It's like, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not out of your teeth. Right. I literally right. thought my car was like fucked up right. the other day. And then it was my homeboy driving and I was like, turn the radio off. Do you right. hear that? Right. And we were listening. I was like, nigga, that's the road. That's the road. It's that's just the road. The road. So, so what you're saying is the, the material. It, is it's, the, makes it, it, it's it, the material it, it, that, that they use. There's a uh, formula yeah. that, that you use to combine how much weight would be on this road versus that. Now, state highways, semi-trucks are not supposed to be traveling the state highways. Now, delivery trucks can, you know, at a certain grade. It, and, and that's why uh, in the city of Moreno Valley, even in Riverside, that's why people get so upset about these semi-trucks. And you should be getting upset about these semi-trucks running up and down your street because the streets were not designed yeah, okay. mm-hmm. to do that. And now that it's raining, look at all the yeah. potholes that are oh, happening. And yeah. that shows you... The imperfection of these contractors and these construction companies, they're using inferior materials. That's why the uh, roads don't last. What are the first few letters of contractor? (laughs) Con. Exactly. You hit it right on the nail. And and that's what's happening with us. A lot of people people don't realize that. Well, yeah, that was just interesting. I mean, when you explained it to me, I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, it it does make sense. It does make sense. Like I said, when you go to airports, they can't afford to be ripping up that um, uh, runway every year. They can't afford to do that. They can't afford really good, like seeing it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. So, um, but, uh, before we, before we go, we're going to, we're going to kind of, kind of shut this down real real quick because we have the Moval Lakers playing at five 15 at the rec center. Uh We're going to go live and we're going to go cover them. And my nephew, he's sleep. He sleep. He sleep. Oh well, that, well, 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 that's because he's he's getting his mind <laughs> together for the game. Over there the but uh, he out. is going to be out there playing, and he's the only black kid on the team. And I don't want to put too much pressure on him. So whenever you see like, and it's so sad that you know people do that because you got this team, and you see the one black kid thinking, okay, they got a black kid. He's you know, okay, well, he's gonna kill him. yeah, he's going to do good. No, not not my nephew. He's no. just he's, out there. He's out there doing you know, and he's he's kind of tall for his age. He's really cute. So so people think that. You know, he's tall. Oh, wow, wow. He's, you know, he's only, he's only eight years old. He could be my boyfriend. Well, yeah, he's looking for a sugar mama if you want to, you know, <laughs> look, look. But, you know, but, but you got to do it. Wait, wait, wait. But you got to deal with his mama. That's the problem oh, with that. Well, so. I could probably deal with her, but. I don't know. <laughs> she, she's in love with her baby. But, um, <laughs> but uh, be, uh, before we go, uh, Sean, I- I- anything in, in closing or? Um, it's kind of complicated, so I'll probably have to write it down. Okay, but um, you know we're, we're going to be working on your 15 minute show and, and get your word out. Like I said, we're doing a lot of great things. So I want you guys to have your own platforms to say what you guys want to say and get the message out because we can take what Anna is saying and add it on to our show and take what Max is saying, you know, and add it on to the show. So Max, yes. uh, what do you got? Okay, I'm super excited. We've got to work out tonight, 5:55 p.m. Towngate Memorial. Come check it out. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it's my birthday tomorrow. It's tomorrow? The 19th. It's tomorrow. I thought we were going to karaoke tonight. We are. That's what okay. I was going to say. But okay. we are totally karaoke at S-Bar, S-Bar in Marino Valley. Is, is Mr. Man going to be there? He will. So please come say hi. You know, actually, I told him he's uninvited. But, you know. That's yeah, he's going to show up. I'm going to have to fight him. And then I'm going to be like, oh my God, I just love you so much. Right. I, I might have to fight him. Don't then. fight him. You know, he's not. He's. You know what? He likes to, when he feels like somebody's pressing the line with me. Right. 
he just likes to be an asshole and then like go talk to bitches. But yeah. I'm gonna look good as shit tonight, so <laughs> okay. I dare him to. You know okay, what I mean? well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stop by. Yes, at, please at, stop by. At, at, I like Patron, right. so stop. I can't afford Patron. It, oh, no, you know. it's cheap there. Okay, it's no, no, no. Valley. no, 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 no. When, when you're with me, it's more like uh, Budweiser oh. or something. I'm messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, please, and you know, um, anything you're looking for in the community at Jess Maxson on right. Instagram. Right now, what what time should we be there tonight? Uh, it starts at ten. Ten. Ooh, that, that's past my bedtime. I'm an old man. Come on, daddy. Yeah, well, okay. Come Never mind. Now. All right. I'll, I'll stop by real, real quick. All right. Uh, Mr. Daryl Terrell, what do you got for us as we exit? Well, the only thing I would say is is we are entering a new uh, beginning. And Give the council a chance. I uh, know. Uh, <laughs> and after January 20th, and the people just uh, be patient and hold on and don't give up hope. That's my word of the day. Don't give up hope. And do your research, people. I mean, come on. I mean, we, you know, uh, and please tune into the. Uh, Wait, you want ca- people to look at their sources? Yeah, do absolutely. Their research? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. You know, I don't expect the young people to do that because you guys just you won't do it. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. I never got anyone to challenge me on the my uh, figures for the light. I, isn't it because people just take what what you say and say, oh yeah, that that sounds about right. It sounds good. So, but uh, everybody, it's going to be an interesting year. Please tune into the council on Tuesday coming up. I believe it's this Tuesday or the next Tuesday. It's going to be interesting. And of course, Louise Palomares is going to close the show. And uh, as we continue down this road, we are solvent according to the city website. So there is no reason why we can't spend $80,000 to let the people of district four uh, select who they want to represent them. This has been the radio, the hot seat radio show. Mighty Max. Sean Fortine. And Mr. Merle Valley, Daryl Terrell. Yeah. And I'm Donovan Sadiq. And again, we're going to be doing big things. You guys continue to watch the show. We, we got this thing posted, some of the videos. So you guys can see us. This is a really live show. We love you guys. And uh, be